Hi, Punkin. Hey, bud. What you doing? Wanna go do a garden tour, Punkin? What are you looking at? You freak me out when you do that, Punkin. There's spiders on the ground. What are you chasing? Punkin, where are we going? Where are we going? Say hi. Not in the mood, huh? All right, I get that. Hey, what's up, garden friends? If you're a tropical plant party, how's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. Uh, last minute July garden tour here. For some reason, I thought I still had a few days left. Like I thought Saturday was July 30th. It doesn't matter. Time's gotten away from me. COVID, everything's just, everything's an illusion. So just a last minute kind of walk through what's been going on this last month. And not, well, I want to say not a lot's been happening. I haven't been doing a lot, but I have had my family in town and they've done a ton of stuff for me. So we'll go through those things and what few things I've been able to get done out here and you know, just walk around, have a little talk in the garden. There are a few questions people have been asking me that I want to keep in mind and remember to answer and that's pretty much it. Just jump into it. For starters, over here, this is where I had all my little, what were little colocasias potted up in front of my bird of paradise with a bunch of the uh, cordal and freticuses behind them. They, um, yeah, they got real big, which I should have known was going to happen. Originally, there was a xanthosoma variety that was going to go in place. Didn't work out, so I just like, yeah, I was like, hey, these will work. And um, yeah, well, they don't really work. They're too big for the spot, but it is what it is. And I actually, I like them so much. Their foliage is so beautiful, glossy, and just a gorgeous shade of green that I've been pretty much okay with it, other than the fact that it doesn't make sense to have these gigantic elephant ears planted in front of everything. But it is what it is. That's kind of the theme of this year. So I'm just going with it. It's fine. The variety of these is called Maui Gold. I like them a lot. I, there's not really a ton to say about them other than that they're growing for me very well. I've grown these in the past and they just didn't do this much. They just kind of stayed around two feet tall and uh, they're just, I figured they would do the same. But instead, here we are and they're like probably closer to four feet tall at least in this pot. That one, they're not getting quite as big. They are kind of raggedy right now, sort of everything is. We've had some really, really intense storms this morning, so things are looking a little bit beat up, but um, that's all right. I'm just happy it didn't have to water today. So to kind of get a break from it, you can see I'm talking about how some of the leaves are still a little bit stressed from the winds and everything. That's just the way it goes, they'll be okay. You can sort of, kind of make out some of those Cordal and Fruticus is back there that are hiding behind everything. There's the Kiwi back there, and then Maria is the other variety that's in those pots. It's just everything is so hidden by these giant leaves. I do want to make sure to touch on some of the house plants because people ask about those because of the difference. But I'm trying to get the camera back in here. Uh, I have one of my begonias back here, the Maculata is doing very well getting big you know it's things are so different on this channel between what goes on during the winter time where we're inside with the house plants versus outside during the summertime and sometimes i forget to touch on the house plants because i mix them in with everything and then they kind of get lost amongst everything so i'll be sure to try and mention those really pretty caladium back here it's one of the ones from proven winners they Alocasia Morocco right here. That's new. So I haven't done anything with that yet. Uh, way, way, way in the back. You can't see that. Hold on. Let's walk around. We'll go look at it. No point in talking about the house plants if you can't even see them. Back here, Prince of Orange Philodendron doing well. Better than my Australian tree fern. That needs to be repotted, but that's out of my uh, capabilities right now. So it's just, it's going to have to hang tight until I can lift big heavy things that's it's low on my list of priorities that ferns just it's a pain in the butt i think that's because the potting mix that it's in it's what it came from in the nursery and it just it drains too quickly it's not holding on to moisture so uh, the way these plants tend to be once i get this repotted and give it a cut back into something that holds on to moisture better it should bounce back and be fine but for right now it's um it's pretty ticked off but like i said it is what it is Hopefully I'll be back up and running here within a few weeks once my surgeries and everything heal up and I'll be able to get to doing that. Uh, the uh, Persian Shield, look at it, in all of its glory. Brought this in last winter and it is still doing wonderfully. It's getting a lot more shade than I would normally give it, but it just looks so pretty back here. Kind of tucked in with everything, somewhat naturalized. I was like, yeah, you're gonna leave it. 
and it looks fine like that. Uh, Mini Monstera is doing very well. I actually need to get it up onto a stake because it's growing all the way down this wall and then up and back into everything. That's one of the plants from um, Logies, one of the few survivors, and it's doing very well despite having arrived looking basically dead and needing months to recover. It's doing really well to try and get a better shot of it in there, but that's kind of hard to do. You can see lots of nice thick growth coming up out of it. That's like the original stem right there that everything died off on and there's all the new growth. They're fast growers, so it's doing well. The Trio Star hanging out here in this aquatic planter. I had this in the garage in my grow space during the winter time and went ahead and brought it out here and gave it some fresh soil. As long as that water stays moving around it, it's nice and easy, it's easy to grow. In fact, I have another one of these I need to pot up. Pam from at Pam's Planty Things sent me another one of these as like a get well gift after one of my surgeries. And so I'm going to do something probably very similar to this with it. Cause it's just, these are so, so, so easy to grow when they have something around them, just keeping them moist at all times. And I don't have to worry about keeping it hydrated. The coloration on this one's a little bit weak, but I think that that's largely because the sun back here is also very weak. So it's not like super, super vibrant and colorful, but it has some colorful foliage coming up from down in there, sort of, kind of hidden away and tucked inside. But uh, I think that that will color up a little bit more. The sun's starting to shift as the season progresses and the sun's a little bit lower in the sky, so more light's getting back here. And I think that's why some of the newer growth is coming out with a little bit more color than some of the old growth that's still on it from last winter. Look at that foxtail palm. It's been growing wonderfully putting out new leaves, very happy, very healthy. Potted this up in the springtime with some sun impatience, wave petunias and supertunia vista bubblegum. And everything in there is doing really well. It's turned sideways, it needs to be turned around, but I can't do that. So I have to wait for somebody else to do that for me. But everything in there is nice and happy and healthy and lush. And right next to it is the Dracenia Draco. The dragon tree picked this up not too long ago so there aren't really any updates to give on it other than just that it's one of my favorite plants it's just so thick and luscious i love the trunk on this plant it has this awesome smooth texture to it and it's like a succulenty type trunk beautiful plant something that was on my wish list for a long time and i'm happy to have it part of the tripod i'm using a new lens and it's much heavier than my old lens and so i'm having it's a little bit weird balancing the camera and the tripod in my one good arm and everything right now. Look at the hydrangea. Can you even see it? Is it in focus? Probably not. I and mean, well, it kind of is. This is a vanilla strawberry hydrangea. I potted this one up to replace one that died last year that got overwatered. The pot just wasn't draining well enough. We had tons and tons of rain last year. And the plan was to uh, go ahead and repot my other one up into one of these faux concrete planters like this one's in. And uh, I can't find them online anymore. They still sell these in the next size down in a 24 inch, but this is a 30 inch, might be 28. So instead of repotting my other one, which is down, it's all the way down there. It's gonna be hard to see. You see those white things up there, right there? So blue pot, too small. So the plan was to repot those and have one on each side of the stairs down there in these cement like planters, but without the, I can't do it without two of them. And since uh, I'm like having to just kind of sit and rest all summer and I can't even like I don't really ever go down here I was like forget it I'm just gonna leave the hydrangea tree down here near the tables in the furniture where I'm sitting and relaxing and can view it up close it's fine it's fine and it's whatever that's again that's gonna be the theme for a lot of <laughs> what's going on in the garden this year because everything just is what it is now, I do still have a whole bunch of gingers and things down in here that I had planned on potting up I talked about that in one of my last vlogs where I decided to go ahead and just wait and maybe do that next year because I don't think the rhizomes on them are big enough to really give them a good shot at getting through this first winter. So uh, they're just going to hang out in their pots. I'll bump them up uh, probably maybe to a three gallon size on the larger ones and then probably up to a gallon size for the smaller ones like this one right here. And uh, I'll just let them go dormant this winter. The Hedichium, the butterfly gingers, they overwinter so incredibly easy because they already want to die back on their own. It's just part of their growing process. So I will generally just let them do their thing. They'll die back. I put them someplace cool and dark and somewhat dry. And then they usually start going on their own in the springtime. They have that internal clock. It's very similar to what I would do with like caladiums and canna lilies and those sorts of things. Just let them chill. 
let them stay out of active growth and they'll bounce back on their own. They'll do just fine. Pie a tree down here, that's new. It's not from Monrovia, despite it being in a Monrovia pot. I, the variety is like red lady, I think might be the variety, or is that an apple? I don't remember. I just like the way papayas grow. They have a really strong growth, neat growth habit, and they're usually cheap and easy to come by. This is like seven bucks, and I got it as a little stick and threw it into a bigger pot, and that'll keep doing its thing. We'll see how it does this winter in the growth space. They like a lot of warmth, uh, but I keep the growth space pretty warm, so hopefully it'll do fine inside. I don't know. It's kind of an experiment. That's why I got it, because I wanted to see how it would do this winter. You can see my shadow gesticulating. See all of that? Is that obnoxious? I don't know. The lotus bloomed and finished blooming, and here are its pods. One of them's dried up. The other one here is still working on drying up. I don't plan on saving the seeds from them. I don't see a reason to. It's not like a super fancy variety of lotus, but I still think these pods look really cool. So if you had seen these in the vlogs before, I think this variety was called Pink Lantern. I think. I'm not positive. I'm pretty sure that that's what this one is. Just a neat plant. I like the pods. They look neat. You can see those seeds hanging out inside of them. Well, maybe you can. I can. I don't know if the camera's going to show it or not. I hope you can see it. More houseplant news. Anthurium's doing wonderfully down here. They got a little bit sun scorched when I moved them out. I mean, I put them into deep shade, but they still had a few issues adjusting to the light. I guess I moved them a little bit too quickly, but uh, they've been putting out lots and lots of new foliage during that time and some beautiful flowers that are kind of hard to see. And they are flowering really well. You can see this more pale one in the front and the gorgeous like hot pink flower in the back. The challenge with the anthuriums for me has always been finding the right balance of light to keep them flowering. So that's why you see some scorched foliage because I tend to push them a little bit far just to make sure they're getting enough light to keep flowering and they are. They just started putting up new flowers, so they're doing well. Oh, and back here, you can't see any of that. Back here, will you, can I, I'm trying to show you my pretty Edensoni hybrid. This was sold as an Edensoni hybrid. It's hiding. I'm gonna try and find it for you. Well, you can kind of see it. The spot where I've had to put it is not the most ideal. Come on. This is a hybrid. It was an unnamed hybrid, but it is growing so much. This only had like one or two leaves on it when I brought it outside. And it's growing all the way up from the ground. I'm going to try. This is like an awkward spot. So I can try and show you more of the growth on it. Yeah, I don't know. It's an unnamed hybrid. You know, the add in Sonai's, there are lots of mixes in between some of the ones who people have been growing them for a really long time. So uh, what its makeup is exactly, I don't know. You know, there's the wide varieties and those things like that. So it might just be something of that nature. But for such a small plant to be putting out such big foliage already uh, is pretty interesting and the holes are a different shape than what I'm used to the way they're like bigger on one side and smaller on the other oh, it's kind of a neat plant and I would be interested to know it's a uh, parentage actually because it, well like I said it's very unique and not necessarily what I'm used to with the add-in so nice it's also not that far-fetched from what you usually see either but usually with the add-in so nice you don't usually see leaves quite that big until the plants have been pretty big and established this is just in a little one gallon pot you can see where it was started down there and it just has a few little leaves up there so it's been doing its thing it's doing well pardon the angles here this is sort of a crammed spot but i had to stick this someplace where i knew my drip would hit it every day it just gets misted every single morning and uh, with me not being able to water the plants and spend a lot of time tending to them it just kind of had to go someplace that's kind of erratic and doesn't make sense, hence why it was so hard to get it on camera to find a good angle. Also, not really supposed to be holding the camera unless it's on the tripod. Making it work, figuring things out. Oh, look, the sun came out. I was back there tucked behind all the plants and didn't even realize that the sun came out for the first time today. Wasn't expecting that. Cloudy weather is actually better for filming, so something I don't say very often but the sun needs to go away it's not welcome anymore I'm trying to film a video here look at the bromeliads they are getting so big and they started to cook just a little bit in the heat of July but for the most part they're doing pretty well trying to make sure they stay moist and hydrated and everything which isn't it's been raining an awful lot so that hasn't been too hard to pull off same thing with the Talansias back here the Cyanase the pink quill Talansias those are new and they are doing well in their baskets. Over here is the variegated bird's nest fern that got repotted in a video not too long ago. And you can see has some new foliage starting to come up out of there, which is exciting. 
Always loving the bird's nest ferns start throwing up new leaves. It's fun with ferns, how the little fiddle heads kind of come out and unfurl from the centers. And over here, this is the Adenidia palm planter. Put this together, I don't know, sometime in June. And everything in there is doing very well, very lush and full actually. The caladium got a little bit of scorch on it. It's like one day where it got really hot and that took out just one of these leaves here. But otherwise, the rest of the foliage is looking great. I could go ahead and cut that out actually, which I should probably do. I think the variety on this is called Super White. I believe it's one of the ones that I take inside and overwinter. By overwinter, I mean I put it bulb in a box and let it chill all winter. I don't do anything with it. It just kind of hangs out. The Supertunia Vista Bubblegum is bouncing back and doing very well. Remember that looked pretty darn scraggly when I put it in there. I gave it like a 50% cut back and it started to bounce back and do well. Look at the Heliconia, one of my favorite plants in the garden. Been getting a good amount of flowers out of these so far this summer. They kind of took a while to start doing their thing unfortunately just because it was a pretty mild summer has been so far. In fact, right now it's only like 82 degrees. The humidity is unbelievable. It's like 94%. It is very sticky. I feel disgusting right now, but it's not hot. It's just sticky, which is okay. The plants seem to enjoy that, but things like heliconias, they tend to prefer warmer temperatures to really get them blooming. So uh, I'm happy that it just ha even has the one on it right now. And there's another one coming in under here that you can kind of see under the leaf of this Ludia. This is an Elocasia Ludia over here. These were out here last summer and I took them inside and let them chill for the winter time and they're doing their thing looking big and beautiful and vibrant big healthy plants. I love this variety of Elocasia. They have such beautiful vibrant foliage with the contrast of the veining and the leaves and then just the differences and the shades of green in between everything. It's like a painting. They are stunning plants. Like I said, one of my favorites and they grow very easily too. Like I just bring them back out here, throw them in like a 10 inch pot, which is too small actually. I should have put these probably in a 15 to 20 gallon container to get them going, but they're doing okay. I have them on drip. Sometimes when you put things on drip that you can push them a little bit further in smaller pots. It shouldn't necessarily do that, but it's what I did. I didn't anticipate not being able to repot them as they grew, so here we are. They're doing okay, but uh, I'm going to try and bump them up a pot size sometime in the next week or two. Windmill palm in the back looking good. I'm really bad about giving updates with the windmill palms during the summer because they're mostly plants I pay attention to in the fall and winter because they're like the only things outside that look cool. Even though they're potted, uh, they're out here most of the winter time. Look at the alpinia. In the back, this is Zarimba variegata, variegated shell ginger. Lovely plant at nighttime underneath this coach light that's up here that just lights up, or I should say is luminous, is what I should say. It's very reflective. Shouldn't say it. I'm sorry, Reb. Plantastica, she called me out on that in my video about them. No, they don't actually light up. They don't have luminescence, but they have a lot of reflection in them, which is true of all variegated plants. That's why I like to have them in the backgrounds in the dark areas because they well, they brighten things up. They draw your eye back. And so at nighttime, that stands out a lot more. Can you, do you know what I'm talking about? You can see it between those two trunks, right? The alpinia, it's beautiful. It's a great plant. Me and my cracking adult puberty voice going on over here. Look at the, uh, sh this is not a shell ginger. This is a Tahitian flame hidichium. I've been working on dividing this up a little bit. The pot that it's in isn't quite wide enough, so its rhizomes have started to lift a little bit. They're a plant that likes to be potted in a shallow container and I put them in this like blue bubble pot. Can you see it? Kind of a little bit there, which is a taller container. So I've been slowly excavating some rhizomes out of there so I can relocate them, maybe send them off to some people. I know that I had told one person I would send them a rhizome. With the whole pandemic thing going on, I'm not really going to the post office, so that may have to wait till next year. We will see. But otherwise, it's been doing wonderfully. This got repotted in a video last year and it needs another one, which is good. It's a healthy plant and you can see it's been grown and doing its thing. I lifted all the plants out that were down this corner and now I'm going to try and make one more division through this pot so I'll have three plants. And they're just, they're beautiful. Beautiful plants. This should put up orange flowers. All the Hedichiums, I think, in the next garden tour should be in bloom. Everything's about a month behind because we had a really, really weird spring where it was like warm and then May was very cool. So the plants kind of got stunted by about a month, but 
that's, they usually don't start blooming for me until like late July to early August anyway, so instead it's probably gonna be mid-August this year. Oh, for the first time, I'm seeing lots of growth out of my ponytail palm, and I think that that's because I've actually been watering it. It's one of these plants that I generally just don't do anything with because it's a plant that just kind of hangs out and does its own thing. It's not demanding. During the winter, I put it in the dark side of my garage where it just sort of chills and like I said, it's a low maintenance plant. It's the ponytail palms and then like the Sansevierias, I just let them do their own thing because they're not demanding. So they get a little bit neglected. So I decided to bump it up this year and put it someplace where I'll remember to have it in the line of drips, which it really isn't necessary for this plant, but it certainly does grow much more when you do that instead of just looking like the same plant for three years in a row. So that's fun. I can't really see the fun part about the palm here though, can you? Because it's all buried has nice fun trunk on it good swollen base but i don't know can you see it look at it there it is you can kind of see it in there it's tucked away and hidden uh with these yucca recurvifolias in the front i've tried to set things up in a way so that the people who are taking care of my plants for me the people who are watering my plants for me don't have to necessarily know what needs water that much like things that need a lot of water group together and then I like to have things that don't need a lot of water group together just makes it easier so I don't have to worry about things being overwatered or underwatered that way and then there's drip also but I have so many plants that a lot of my drip emitters are the emitters they're this not like the little heads they're the what do they call micro sprayers so I have them down low but that's not great at giving deep watering so that has been good for the more succulenty type of plants but plants something like a ginger that need a lot of water those are getting watered directly by the emitters and by people because on the days where it's really hot the drip hasn't quite been cutting it just because i have it set to a pretty low setting right now so that things like i said don't get overwatered. the areca palm has a few fronds left on it that need to be cut off from when i brought it outside but it's done a lot of growing i mean like a lot of growing i don't know if it's going to fit in the garage this winter we will see hopefully it will little fiddle doing great another plant that i just don't mess with i leave it alone we get enough rain during the summer to get it by it's just one of those plants that does better when i tend to give it some space <laughs> and not be too um concerned about it basically it's one of those plants where if i over love it they just kind of die off so it's been doing well. It seems to be enjoying the spot over here where it's getting actually a very good amount of sun and not a ton of water. I don't give this plant a lot of water. I know that goes against what everybody says to do with the ficus loratas, but from my experience, it's a fig and I like to let it dry out between waterings, at least outdoors. Indoors, no, I pretty much do the same thing indoors too, but my humidity is high enough that I don't usually have to worry about it. Oh, and just below there is the Freckles Croton. It has these fun little leaves on it. It's still looking a little bit torn up from the storms this morning, but it's doing well. I gave it a good repot and it has just flushed out and become this big, bushy, beautiful plant since I did that. And that was only like a month ago. It responded very nicely to being repotted. Look at how it's so big. It was just like a few sticks a couple years ago, or not even a couple years ago, the beginning of last summer, and now it's just this nice, big, bushy, happy, colorful plant. And it's one of my favorite plants that I have out here, actually. I know the leaves aren't anything crazy or special, but it is just, it has been the easiest croton I have ever grown. It doesn't throw a fit when I take it inside in the wintertime. It very rarely drops leaves, and when it does, it's just a few, and it comes back out and acclimates to the sun very quickly. It's just for me, it hasn't been a very fidgety croton, and uh, uh, what's not to love about that? Because sometimes the crotons, they can be really fun to have outdoors during the summer, then you move them in the house, and I'm sure many of you know from experience that, that they tend to just throw a fit, and they'll drop their leaves, and you have to revive them, and it's just, it's a pain. I don't have to do the whole process of hardening them off like six weeks in advance like I do with my other crotons. This one, I just move it in and out and it does fine. The other ones, you know, I start gradually reducing their light over a very long time span, much longer than really should be necessary. But that's the only way I found to keep the regular crotons from dropping their leaves. And even then, they still drop some. Whereas this guy, nope, not at all. Nice, sturdy, forgiving, strong plant, and it's beautiful. Look at all the color. What's not to love? Who doesn't love all those colors? This right here was a fall planter that I did last year in a little 
barrel and I potted it up with all perennials and there's a weed in there too. I went ahead and I just left it. It's fine. This has some dwarf goldenrod in the front. It has some sea oats, northern sea oats in the corner for some texture. It has an ivy running down the front that's just been scorched and cooked but again I'm not concerned about it. It'll be fine. It's ivy and the sun's starting to shift so it's not going to get as much sun over the next few weeks. And then in the back I can never remember the name of these while I'm filming but I'm sure as soon as I'm done filming I'll remember what they're called and I'll post pictures of these when they go into full bloom but uh, they have gorgeous flowers. I'll try and look it up and I'll either put it down here in the screen or in the description of the video but it's not much to say about it right now since they're not in flower but this is a nice lovely display. It's fun doing things with perennials sometimes in the pots. Not all perennials respond that well to being in pots. Sometimes they prefer to be in the ground but so far everything that's in here have been sturdy plants. The sea oats I've been finding popping up in other plants this spring so they did their thing and reseeded and it's just a fun planter. It's kind of fun having something that just sort of comes back and does its own thing every year and that's been a nice thing to watch happen and progress like over here with the Sunfinity Sunfinity sunflower right next to it. I like to incorporate some sunflowers into the garden every year just because the finches really like them. Uh, but sometimes I have issues getting them going because of the rabbits and the squirrels. But the Sunfinity I have had a little bit better luck with. It kind of depends on what it's potted up in but for the most part it's been doing well. I don't have any of the great big ones because like I said the rabbits usually devour them before I can do anything. Maybe next year I'll try it with like a cage put a cage around the seedlings or get them started in a pot till they're nice and big before the rabbits can chew them up. That might work. Let's move down to the actual garden. Start looking at some of the gardening plants. There's some things to talk about while I'm on my way to the garden. You can see I've been repotting. I have a heliconia andromeda over here. I'm about to divide lots of new heliconias that are getting repotted over here. Got the tortoise laying out, getting some sun. Not a ton of it because it's kind of cloudy. You know, be careful what you ask for because I was like, hey, it's too sunny. And now the sky is kind of ominous and it turned green a little while ago. So, so hopefully that doesn't mean something bad's on its way here. Just probably more storms. Hey, Tuck. Tucker, you say hi? You say no? All right, that's fine. Toby, what about you? Yeah, sleepy old men. That's just the way it goes with the doggies. They're getting older. Well, this garden bed right here has had a lot that's happened to it. I don't know how much you can tell but I had talked a couple months ago about wanting to remove some gingers and ferns that were growing all the way up basically to where Tucker is right here in the front. This entire front area of this garden bed had gingers and ostrich ferns in it and they were coming up over the patio. It was just too much and I didn't like it. I wanted to be able to get those out of there and have a clean line that runs across the front. So when my uh, older sister was in town helping me out with things, she went ahead and dug all those gingers up and those ferns. We relocated them. I'll show you where they went. And then I put, got a couple more sun patients put in here. Another pink, another orange. There's an orange in between these two pink that doesn't have flowers on it right now. With some more lemon coral sedum, some more of the set crazyas down there. And that will fill out. It's There's such a difference in how long they've been in the ground that I'm not expecting it to even out. Like what you see over here probably will not equal out over here by the end of the year but that's okay there are some perennials mixed in here and then i also had a sable miner put in right here these are just little palms with fan leaves they never get very big they're very cold hardy they're good into zone six with some protection that's where i am i'm in zone six another sable miner right there and then from now on i will make sure to keep the ferns and gingers pulled out from the front of this garden bed so that things can stay a little bit more fun and tidy across the front here there's still some weeds gonna see lots of weeds because i can't bend over so that's just the way it is they're gonna be there i'm liking these lines being able to have the clean line that runs through here much more because it was just too much having the plants coming up and over the sides there so that looks much 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 better my big croton down there is doing well also the hanging basket still kind of meh my big croton over here that's doing very well it's enjoying the summer it has tons and tons of new growth on it this is the one that i bring in uh, during the winter time has a it's in a 15 gallon pot and I didn't repot it this year but I did top dress it with a lot of composty nice rich organic soil one that holds on to moisture a little bit longer because this was another plant like with my Australian tree fern where the soil just drains a little bit too fast and it's hard to keep them hydrated so that plus being on drip it's doing very well looks good you know when I bring them outside 
I, even though I moved them into the sun slowly, I wasn't as patient as I should have been this year. So there's a little bit of sun scorch, but I mean, that's all flushed out and gone now and the whole thing's looking fantastic. Uh, over here, I have my rope, pardon the shakiness with the tripod, Tucker, keep the Tucker. Tucker, my dog keeps running underneath it and kind of tripping it up a little bit. Uh, this, I haven't done much with this area. I just moved some of the tropicals over here by the door. So my big Robolini palm, pygmy date palm is over here and looking beautiful and happy and healthy. And then patients got the frog in a blender caladiums down here. Terrible name, but beautiful foliage. I put a lime sizzler coleus in the back and then pink dragon wing begonias are in there too. But this has only been like this for like maybe two weeks. So it's going to take a little bit more time until it starts to put on a show and look nice. There's also a justicia over here, not blooming yet, but this will hopefully be a lot nicer to look at here in a few weeks. I have a tea plant back here. This is Cordelin Fredicasa Harlequin. You might remember it from last year. It's that gorgeous rainbowy foliage. It's similar to the kiwi, which I have around the pool plants and I showed you one earlier, but it's just, it maintains its rainbowy pinkness a little bit longer than the kiwi does. I'll show you the kiwi in just a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. Over here, this is the Pakistakis lutea lollipop plant. It's doing wonderfully. This is another plant that I don't do very much with in the winter. I just kind of let it hang out and chill. I let it die back a little bit, loses some of its foliage. But then when I bring it back outside, it just responds wonderfully and puts on a show and looks beautiful. I did plant a Hamelia patens down here. It's not doing much yet, but it's starting to get going. It's so late to be getting these things planted up. But, you know, better late than never, because I couldn't get those things done in June. So, got that done. It's putting out a few little flowers you can kind of see above my finger. The hummingbirds really like these plants, so I make sure to have it out here every year. I didn't bother bringing mine in last year, because usually I can find them for like six bucks. So I was like, it's just, it wasn't worth taking up the space for some of the other tropicals. My hibiscus... It was blooming wonderfully yesterday and just looked stunning. I'll, here's a little kind of a out of focus time lapse of it blooming yesterday. Today, eh, not so much. We had those bad storms. In the front, I have some seashell planters. I'm gonna get potted up. I'll do a video when I do those. I'm just gonna put some low maintenance annuals in here that don't need too much water. Just something to add a little bit of interest to this entryway because it's still looking pretty ragged and raddity, raddity, raggedy compared to how I'd prefer for it to look. Back to the garden bed. Queen palm, look at it. This queen palm is just so happy. I have it on drip. Uh, it's one of the few plants I've been remembering to keep fertilized and it's just responding wonderfully. I picked this up oh, March 21st from Greenscape Gardens here in St. Louis. Uh, when they announced the shutdown and I was worried about my nurseries, not realizing that the nurseries didn't have to shut down. And then we had like snow or something a week later and I, that, that was too big to move in my garage and I had the other things going on. So I just threw it down on the driveway and put a tarp over it and it did fine. And that's the same with this queen palm over here. I didn't give an update with it, but it's growing very well. I don't know. Can you see it? I'm holding the tripod up really high. There it is. I don't know if that was in frame or not, but beautiful plant. The sun's about now, so I can't see my screen. So we just kind of play in filming roulette here and that's fine. The pool planters, these are the ones with the uh, uh, the kiwis, Cordoba and Fredicasa kiwis. Like I was talking about how they're similar to the Harlequin, but they tend to get more of a green and gold color to them when things get warmer outside, but they still maintain a lovely, gorgeous pink outline on the foliage. Aren't they beautiful? One of my favorite cordolins. That's largely because they stay small, they're easy to propagate, they grow fairly quickly, and they're pretty sturdy as far as the cordolins are concerned. Yep, those are all doing well. I have three in this pot and then three in the planter that's over here. The petunias, eh, they're looking nice, lots of color, but it is time to go ahead and give them their cutback. Usually I do that mid-July. Like I said, we're a few weeks behind. They're starting to get a little bit scraggly, but just so much color. Look at how beautiful they are. They're looking fantastic. I'm glad that I went ahead and just said, forget it and planted every single one of the ones that I was considering planting in these planters. I Usually I just use one color in this where I was like, forget it. I'm putting them all in there. And uh, I like the result of that. They're just so colorful and so vibrant. I'm assuming you can see them. I hope you can, because they're very pretty. And back to the garden bed, the bananas are doing wonderfully. Look at how big they are. So big and luscious and healthy. It's just been a great year for them with all the rain and 
everything that we've had they haven't had to do much with them they got light light fertilizing earlier in the year and that's about it because they haven't been able to do a ton of fertilizing one of my favorite hibiscus is blooming over here i wish i could remember the name of this one but i cannot if, if any of you do know the name put it down in the comments it's usually much more pink than this but uh, i assume just the shifting temperatures usually it has a nice coral color to it with an orangish light peachy color on the outside of the foliage or flower petals that is it's a beautiful plant makes me very happy i really enjoy it the crinum lily down here starting to bud and I'm surprised I only see one bloom stalk on it. That's a little bit bizarre, but there will probably be more coming up. Usually it's bloomed by now. So I don't know what that's about. Again, it's probably just because we had such a weird spring. Uh, and sometimes it'll shoot out blooms from down below and they'll run across the ground and I have to stake them up. But this one right here seems like a nice sturdy flower bud. This is the Persephone and it gets really nice big pink trumpet shaped flowers on it's been hardy here in zone 6a i'm in 6a 6b that's something i forgot to mention earlier in the video i always get asked about this during the summertime uh no i live someplace cold and just all the tropical potted plants get moved into my garage during the winter time and uh, most of the things that are in the ground stay in the ground but not quite everything tucker you're not supposed to be in there bud you know, they get older and you let them get away with things and then they just walk all over you okay so this area all new. Pretty freshly planted up. You can see gingers there, ginger there, ginger there. Those are gingers that were lifted from that corner that I showed a little while ago where the ferns were. They are the Hedicium uh, Flaming Torches. They've been really hardy here in Zone 6 for me. I've been growing them for like, I don't know, probably eight years. So this is the area that I had talked about in other videos where I wanted to put those smaller Hedichiums with the pink flowers. This is where I'll be putting them next year when they have larger, more developed root systems. That way they'll have a better chance of getting through their first winter. Also have a Leucocasia gigantea in the back here, the Thai giant. Just putting up some new leaves with a red obsidian banana right behind it. Now those aren't hardy here. The obsidian banana is in a pot, so that'll get moved in. And the Leucocasia, I will probably dig it up, that Thai giant, and bring it in. Just see how I feel in the winter time. Uh, but as far as perennials go, there's all those gingers, some much larger sable miners. There's two right here. And then there are two more over here with some crepe myrtle, dwarf crepe myrtles in the back behind them. I like the dwarf crepe myrtles. They tend to be a little bit more cold hardy, at least here where I live. And they just have the cute little tufts of pink flowers on them. Kind of like a butterfly bush, but for me, they tend to keep going a little bit longer during the summertime and the pollinators like them a ton. So it's good to have them around. So this whole area, like I said, with the exception of the elephant ear and the banana, mostly perennials. I will tuck sun and patience in, pink and orange ones just like that were over there. There's some hidden over there on that side too to fill it out some more. I don't know if I'll do that this year. I don't really see a reason to. And then this bowl that's in the front needs to be leveled. And a few of the plants are kind of crooked. I had people planting things that are new to planting and I just was like, it's fine. I hadn't noticed it. Now I notice it. I'll straighten them out. That'll be easy. But this bowl that's in the front, I'll get that leveled out and I'm either going to turn it into a fountain of some sort or put a, just a few simple plants in there to fill out over the top and come over the sides. I think that'll look nice. The Alexander Palm is doing very well looking lush and happy it still has some of its old foliage on it from the springtime where or really last winter where it starts to die off but otherwise it's looking good i have to go a little bit crooked for you to be able to see it but it's been very happy and healthy here in that pot in the fall someone there's a company that'll come and take this way it goes into a greenhouse it doesn't fit in my house anymore been a long time since it has Look at these elephant ears. The Bikini Teeny Colocasias, they have really taken over, which is nothing new. Happens every year. It just happens further and further down from where I planted them every year. They like to move around. They run. I wouldn't plant these someplace where they would grow more vigorously than this because they might be kind of a pain. But there are so few elephant ears that are perennial to where I live that I just leave them. I let them do their thing and they can get away with being aggressive because they have such a bold impact. They're kind of dwarfing the banana clump that's right here though. These bananas are huge. They're massive, but it's just a little bit hard to tell with this huge clump of elephant ears underneath them. But next year they will move further down this line. Eventually they'll fill in this curve that's in the front with this blue dune grass and they'll 
take over that area and it'll look better. But for now, I'm just leaving them, letting them do their thing. More gingers over here. These aren't new. They've been there for a while. These are another division of the Flaming Torch that I took a few years ago. And they are starting to fill in and look pretty good. Usually I come in here and prune these banana trees in July, but I just haven't gotten back there yet. Lots of gingers though. So that's gonna come out and they'll have really pretty orange flowers that come up over the front of this bed here. The hummingbirds and butterflies really like it. Banana canna doing great over here. That was just planted up not too long ago also. And it's really put on a lot of growth. Pardon all the poles and everything over here. Things are always a mess. It's nothing new, but these will come up and get nice and tall, eight to 10 feet, even taller someday and create a little bit of a privacy screen right here on the side of the gate that goes out to my driveway. That's the same with the banana cans right here. And there's one on the other side of this ginger right here. This ginger was transplanted from that clump over there. I thought it made sense to have them on both sides since there's banana cannas on both sides of the gate and then to have the gingers on both sides as well. There's a clump of ostrich fern in there. It's a, it, that's probably not going to look great this year because it got dug up and transplanted, but it'll die back and it should come back and look good next year. This area over here, eh, it's a work in progress. I wasn't really expecting this to look phenomenal or beautiful or anything like that this year, but I went ahead and just had the people who are helping me plant a bunch of elephant ear bulbs in here and then my alocasias that go in the garage during the winter throw those in the ground just because they do better in the ground. Alocasias they tend to put up much larger foliage and look better when they're in the ground or in a very large container. So it's a little bit late in the year. I don't really know what they're going to do this year, but it's better than just leaving them and doing nothing with them and waiting until next year. That would seriously, seriously set them back on their growth and their progress. So this way they at least get a little bit of time to grow. Tucker, excuse me, I'm trying to walk here. Another plant that people have been asking me about my philodendron, or now this is a thematophyllum, right? By Pinatifidum. This was in a video I did a very long time ago where I divided up a small philodendron plant and Here's the one that I kept. It's looking great. It does need to be repotted. It would have much larger foliage on it if I were to get it into a larger pot. It, like the alocasias, the larger the pot, the more space the roots have to go, they tend to have larger foliage. But it's doing very well. The trunk on it, it's a little stem down there. It's trunk, you could say, very thick and girthy and the foliage is coming up nice and stiff and stiff nice and stiff and healthy overall it's it's doing well it's a happy plant like i said eventually hopefully by august or september this area will have some sun and patience in it and lots of big bold elephant ear leaves in it but i don't know it's I'll do, I'm, i have bigger plans for it but this just wasn't the year for it oh you guys having a pool party oh that was very brief you didn't stay there very long you getting kind of hot toby it's crazy how hot it can feel when it's not even hot outside. I just checked my phone and it's like 83 right now. No, it's 79, but the humidity is 87%. The camera even keeps overheating, which does not usually happen when it's lower than 90. But the air is just kind of nasty and sticky. The mule palms, they're looking good. Look at them. See, can I go back out and see both of them at the same time? Not really. They are kind of at an age where they're sort of transforming their growth habits a little bit, which had me freaked out for a while and I thought something was wrong. And I realized that it's just part of their natural maturity. They're maturing. Okay, pool party time for Tucker. I get very easily distracted by my dogs. I apologize. Yeah, anyways, the starting to show more of the queen palm characteristics where you're as opposed to the pindu palm where they have more of an arch shape to their foliage, which you can still kind of see on this one that's over here. But they're doing well. The plants that were put around them was just kind of because I had the plants. They needed to be potted up. But it was the middle of July, so I had my person who was helping me just toss some annuals around the bottom. But you can see, like, the petunias. You don't plant them when it's 97 degrees out for a reason. And you can, I mean, it was, there's some dead flowers in there. But it's fine. The other one's doing okay. And uh, this one on this side's kind of doing okay. Like I said, I just wanted to get those annuals potted up because I had purchased them in the spring. Just made sense to get them planted, not just leave them laying around and let them die that way. May as well give it a shot, right? Another one of my favorite crotons. Talk about this in my other garden tours. This is the mother and daughters where it has these little leaflets that it puts out on the ends of the leaves. Just a fun croton doing well. Another plant people have asked about, the Singapore Twist. Cordon Froticasa, 
also doing well. This plant is a mealy bug magnet. So it spent some time um, in solitary confinement. So I am constantly treating it and spraying it for the mealy bugs, but uh, it's a good grower too. So it seems to be battling those mealy bugs all right, but it is a frustrating thing to have to deal with. Uh, berm is alive and well. You can't even see it because there's so many plants in front of it. You can kind of see the Pedicits japonicus, the skip laurels. It's filled that area in very nicely. My orange tree that was in that area where the elephant ear and the sable miners, the ginger garden under my garden window, that was over there sitting in this pot. I had that moved over here so that area could get finished up. And it seems to be in, uh, doing better over here in the shade. It was getting too much sun over there. Still need to find a place where I want to put that in the garden. One of my variegated alocasias down here. This is a, um, what is its name? I can't remember. This isn't one of my um, odoras. I think it's a macro variety. It has larger foliage on it. And the variegation is much more intense. I mean, look at that. Look at those leaves. Isn't that beautiful? It's been doing great in this spot. I haven't had to do much with it, which is good because I can't. I haven't been able to do much with the plants this summer. And it's been responding fine to that. I think I have it where it's getting enough shade so it's not needing a ton of water. Again, a plant I would have liked to have gotten into the ground like late May probably so that I would get a lot more growth out of it this year. But there's always next year. It's doing okay as it is. I mean, you can see. look at it. That's so pretty, and it has a leaf that's hidden down under there, underneath one of my epiphyllums, and it's just, ugh, so pretty. It's like a painting. It's oleander. This is the Maui Sunrise variety. It has just exploded with growth. I didn't do anything special with it this year other than I top-dressed it with a really nice organic-y, compost -y potting soil to sort of liven it up, and this is I, apparently it really needed that because it, it's just exploded in growth it's never bloomed this much for me it's been covered in these beautiful like coral pink flowers i want to say almost all summer this is the most abundantly it has ever bloomed it's a very very happy plant i really like the oleanders i know they're toxic and poisonous and stuff but just like don't eat it and you're okay i guess if you have kids or dogs and stuff like that you need to be more careful but they're so easy to overwinter. At least if, for me, I keep them in my garage in a cool spot. I don't do much of anything. It gets watered like three times during the winter. If even I just let it chill and hang out where it's not getting a ton of light. And then it comes back outside and just, it does this. Now it doesn't usually do this much. It is absolutely covered in flowers, like I said, but just some um, really getting a nice top dressing of soil into that planter made a gigantic difference. <laughs> I don't know what to say about over here. It's just more plants. There's a lot of plants. Plants, 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 plants. The pedicets are still doing well, which I'm shocked by. Usually the heat of July takes these things out, uh, but not this year. They're, <laughs> they're still growing abundantly. A little bit too abundantly. I'm gonna have to figure something out with those next year. Like, I love it, but also, like, it just doesn't have the formality that I would like to have with this laurel hedge in the front, but eh, who cares? It's fine. They're pretty. Another plant that needs a repotting, which I've said in the last few garden tours, you know, things got thrown off by having that surprise of having to have multiple surgeries over the span of a few weeks, but this will get done in August. It has to get done in August. The Thai constellation, uh, Monstera, I'm going to get that done. I even, I already got like some extra large chunky pumice ordered so I can get the soil mixed up for it. And it, it needs it badly, but it has been growing wonderfully out here. It always does. I bring it outside for the summertime and I stick it generally over here. And then later in the summer, I move it over towards where I sit when the sun's shifted so it won't get cooked. And it just does its thing. It's a great plant. Look at all those roots. It's a very happy, healthy plant. Their roots are more structural than anything. I've kept Monsteras in tiny pots for years on end, and they've been fine with it. However, it's just not stable. It needs a larger pot so I can get it staked up properly into something that's more sturdy and stable because that, like, that's not going to work. It's just going to break. And I know I'm going to get the comments, oh, you could sell me. I'm not selling it. I'm trying to grow a great big monstera tree. Leave me alone. But I don't blame you, but I've, I have had that plant for a very long time before it was trendy. It was like 45 bucks back when I got it, probably 10 or 12 years ago. And it's one of the few plants that I'm fairly attached to just because I like the structure on it. This is another one of the vanilla strawberry hydrangeas, hydrangea trees. They haven't started to put out the pink and the petals yet, but I think probably within the next week or so, because I'm starting to kind of see a hint of that 
up here in the petals. So yeah, this is the other one I was pointing to earlier in the video. Over here on this side of the patio where all of the mosquitoes live. I'm being eaten alive right now. Let's go find some other place to talk about plants. Oh, the honeysuckle. Currently residing in the old hydrangea tree because I haven't moved that yet. It has some of my favorite honeysuckle flowers on it. This is the major wheelers, the variety. I love those flowers. They glow practically with the coral and then the orange in the centers which would be more obvious if it were in focus there you go beautiful honeysuckle this has been blooming on and off for me all summer it's been doing fantastic usually it does like a show in the springtime then takes a rest and then i get a little bit in the midsummer and it bloomed spring and then it bloomed early summer and now it's blooming again here in midsummer it's pretty much where we are basically midsummer right now. So I think having that mild weather this spring actually gave it a few more weeks of growth, giving it more flowers, which is fun. The Lespedeza, not much to show here yet, but by the next garden tour, I think this will be covered with just pink flowers all the way along the stems coming all the way down. The hummingbirds and butterflies love this plant. It's doing well. It's always done very well for me. It's actually getting a little bit too big for this spot, actually, but I don't see a reason to take it out because that's just low on the list of priorities. I got my plumeria tree repotted. Um, I had somebody else to do it for me. The soil blend is a little bit more moisture retentive than I would prefer. Usually I like a soil blend for a plumeria that drains extremely quickly. And this one does, but you can even see looking at it, it's just a little bit clumpy. So I'm just kind of like ugh, hoping it'll work out. I can't do anything with it. so. Uh, I'll just have to remember to uh, be very easy on the watering this fall when the nighttime temperatures are more cool. Or maybe I'll be feeling better enough then to go ahead and give it a repot or add some sand down in there or something. But it, like I was getting ready to say though, this responded very well to the repotting. So I've grown a ton just here in a couple of weeks. So I'm not too upset about that soil blend. I, I'm the one who blends up the soil. I just point to the different bags and say dump it in the wheelbarrow and then I have them mix it up. But I guess I was just a little bit off with my measurement. So it's like I said, a little bit clumpy, but it seems okay. But I'll have to keep an eye on that when temperatures start to cool. Down here, oh, you can't even really see that because the big plumeria leaf's in the way. So those are the curcumas down there, right there that were potted up back in May. They're doing well. The Hilo Beauty Alocasias, not doing much. Sorry, I can't get the camera any closer than that, but I can't really bend over, but they're not, they're not really doing much. Just tiny little leaves with speckles on them. Just we haven't had a ton of heat, so I'm just being patient with them and hoping that in the next few weeks they'll take off and start to look nice. Not much to update with those, but I had some people ask. They just haven't really done much because it didn't really get hot until a few weeks ago here. <laughs> you having fun, Tuck? You having a nice pool party? How about you, Toby? Hey, these dogs, it's not that hot, but when it's this humid, even they're like, no, no, can we please go inside? It's too sticky. Now they can't because it's humid. It's a better look at the garden bed, kind of, despite the big waste bin that's in the front there. But things were pretty messy out here a couple weeks ago. Gotten a lot of cleaning up done. Got that entire bed replanted over there and got that bed where the gingers were fixed up. And yeah, it's just it's a work in progress. It's the garden. It's well about gardening, right? Just get to always keep doing things, always keep changing things and always improving on things. All right, almost done here, going rogue. Have to leave the tripod behind because it doesn't quite fit back here. This is the pollinator garden. Now, it's not like breathtaking or anything like that, but this is basically, I used to call it my dump garden, where it was just where I put plants that I want to grow, but they didn't fit in anywhere else. I threw them up here on the hill, and they were usually plants that I wanted to grow for the pollinators, like this hardy hibiscus up here. It is blooming and just looking great. The storms pulled the foliage down. And then I have a row of Asclepius here in the front. These are for the monarchs, for the butterflies. I always like to make sure I have milkweed out here. This is a perennial variety, one that doesn't like very much water. So the way I've situated this area is with drip. So I have drip going directly to the hibiscus. There's a banana canna back there, more just for filling in that gap that bothers me right there. You see that gap? I don't like it. I want that to fill in. But those are plants that like a lot of water, whereas this is Sclepius, and then this is a Manfreda in the front. There are two of them, which are natives. They're uh, the other counterpart to the Mangaves that people really enjoy growing. 
those are plants that don't like a lot of water. And there's some nepetas and salvias and little tiny plants that are tucked in here too that you probably can't see. But these, over the years, you know, they're perennials. They'll fill out, they'll look better. This particular variety of Asclepius doesn't always transplant that well. So there's five in the ground here. You can already see one of them's not looking great, but I think that that's because of the dogs. I'm pretty sure Tucker ran through here and smashed that one. <laughs> but otherwise, they're doing well. A lot of them are even done with their flowering. You can see they have their seed pods popping up over here on this plant in the back. I'm not seeing any caterpillars on these just yet, but chances are within the next few weeks, they will start to show up. And I'll be sure to include that in a video because it's like one of my favorite things about summer is seeing the monarch caterpillars and their cocoons and it's just fun, happy plants. So yeah, not a beautiful area, but it's more of a functional area. It's for the wildlife with the pollinators and I get to have my hibiscus back here and it's just it's kind of still the dump garden <laughs> but uh, it's this is the most that it's ever had in it so I'm grateful to a family around who were able to come up here and plant this area because it is not an easy area to dig in there's a lot of gravel here because this is all drainage right here that leads down to a sewer so it took a lot of work and they did that for me and I really appreciate it and yeah it'll fill out over time every year it'll start to be more and more full and uh, pretty low maintenance. All the plants that are in here are pretty sturdy, tough plants you don't have to do much with. Oh, the pond. Pool pond. Still a pool pond. Got, there's my Oscar in there. I've been naming, calling it ketchup because it's red. Hey, bud. I know. You're hungry. I'll get you some food in a little bit. Got the Oscars in it for right now. I explained that in one of my other vlogs. It's a long story, but they're hanging out in here while some other stuff goes on. They seem to be enjoying it. It's very full. This has more water than I prefer, but it just been raining and raining and raining i do think i'm going to try and drop the water down about four or five inches because these oscars can jump and they jump high i don't want them jumping out of the water there's two tiger oscars in here too and they're pretty big but they're like impossible to see whereas this one right here stands out beautiful i think it's a chili rose i think is the name of this type of oscar i can't remember it was shipped in from thailand to predatory fins down in florida and then i ordered it from them and it's one of my favorite fish and you can't even see it, but well, you saw it, it was pretty. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. There's still a few areas I haven't touched on. I'll touch on them in the vlog that comes out on Saturday, but the camera keeps overheating. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I'm sure this video is long enough. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, there's still plenty more to talk about, but it would take hours to cover everything. So here we are, things are growing and doing pretty well, especially considering that I haven't really been able to do anything out here and everything's being done by people who are new to plants. They're learning a lot this summer. I'll keep things updated on my Instagram. That's linked down below. That's what I use more than anything else. And don't forget to like the video. It makes a big difference for the channel. I appreciate it. Subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Oh, and one of my curcumas is blooming. How could I not have shown that? They're so pretty. Look at that. I'm trying to stick it in the shade here so you can see it a little bit better. Really fun plants, easy gingers. Again, a plant I don't do much with in the winter. I just kind of let them go into their own dormancy and they start to come back usually on their own in the springtime. And they have these fun pinky flowers on them. Fun plants. I was gonna go. I always do this. I say, I'm gonna go. And then we just keep talking because I see plants and then my plant nerd gene kicks in and I can't stop talking about them. All right, of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye.